Hello and welcome to SEO Rankings Do Follow Podcast. Here we hold regular talks with SEO and digital marketing experts to discuss hot SEO topics and share actionable insights with the SEO community. So subscribe to stay on top of everything going on in SEO. Today we're going to be discussing AI-driven strategies for building brands, enhancing market position, and differentiation. To help us explore this topic, we are joined by Mitch Duckler, brand strategy consultant and managing partner at brand and marketing strategy consulting firm called Full Surge. Mitch is also the author of such books on branding as The Indispensable Brand and The Future Ready Brand. I've also had the opportunity to see you do the TED Talk on a similar topic, so I'm really excited to have an opportunity to talk to you today. Welcome, Mitch. Ah, Thank you. It's great to be here with you. Uh, If you don't mind, I would just love to start by asking you to tell us a bit more about your background and what exactly you do at Full Surge. Sure. I am a As you had mentioned in your introduction, I'm a brand strategy consultant. I have over 30 years of experience in brand and marketing strategy. Uh, Some of it is on on the client side. I began my career in brand management with Unilever and Coca-Cola for nearly 10 years combined. And then uh, the past 20 plus years or so, I've been consulting, but in those exact same areas of brand and marketing strategy. So uh, and and roughly the last 12 years uh, with a firm that I co-founded with some uh, former colleagues that is Full Search. So what we do is uh, fairly um, f- fairly traditional brand strategy work as you think about it, brand positioning, brand architecture, uh, growth strategy, brand experience, things like that. Awesome. Awesome. So you're the perfect person to tell us a bit more about how to build up brands and specifically using this new technology that is coming uh, so uh, since we are talking about AI-driven strategies for building brands, could you give us uh, maybe a brief definition of what it is, of what AI-driven branding is, and what it entails? How do you see this? Yeah, I, I, you know, one thing I would want to clarify is it's not so much that um, AI is driving brand strategy, but rather it's it's being used to influence it, right? It's just another tool. It's another um, or another resource that can be leveraged to inform brand strategy, uh, both really positioning as well as activation. So the way the book is is broken out, because I, I think that has some relevance in, in answering uh, the question you just asked is, you know, the, there's uh, two sections, one on societal trends and the second on the technological trends, which is obviously where AI would fall. So in terms of the societal trends, um, there's a chapter on each topic in the book, um, one on a on purpose and transparency, um, another one on changing attitudes towards health and wellness, and then a third one on Gen Z. And they are all have pretty profound implications for how brands are being positioned. And then on the technology front, the second section of the book, there's there's a chapter on on artificial intelligence, which includes predictive analytics, machine learning, and so forth. Also one on extended reality, so VR, AR, mixed reality. Um, and metaverse, and then uh, one on Web3, which includes blockchain technology, tokenomics, and so forth. And those have pretty profound impact on how brands are being activated. So the activation strategy. So I think it's probably mo- helpful to kind of think about it in those two tranches. Obviously, if we're talking about um, artificial intelligence, it's it's more in that, that, that second uh, bucket of activation. Yeah, I would love to focus a bit more on that second bucket, the technological aspect. Yeah, uh, just to get people more excited about the topic, or maybe people are not even aware that they have problems with the, their brand positioning. What are the key benefits of uh, introducing uh, s- at least certain elements of AI to help you sort of with the technological aspect of coming up with a brand strategy and positioning your business properly? Your, your brand, sorry. Yeah, so I think when it comes to AI, I mean, I talk a lot about this in 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 the chapter that is dedicated entirely to AI. Uh, what AI is enabling is a couple of concepts and, and they're interrelated. Um, the first one I talk about is micro segmentation. And that just means, as the name would imply, we're able to segment markets at a much, much finer, more granular level than ever before. I should also mention that I interviewed over 40 CMOs for this book, uh, mostly Fortune 500 CMOs and, and had a lot of conversations with them about how they're how they're using AI and one of the key uses that they talked about is this 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 notion of micro segmentation. So they talked about, for example, how 
it just several years ago, they had a traditional attitudinal or behavioral segmentation, and they may have segmented the market into six segments. Well, now with AI, they talk about hundreds or even literally thousands of micro segments that um, are obviously much, much more granular in nature, much more finely uh, dimensionalized. And it, it, that just wouldn't be possible without AI. So that's really the first concept is micro segmentation, just uh, defining and understanding consumers at a much more nuanced level. And then the second is what I would call the so what to that, which is hyper-personalization, right? So once you understand and can um, segment consumers so precisely, you can take, you can begin to tailor the experience to them. You can begin to tailor the offer and other elements of the overall brand experience to meet their preferences and, and needs. So it's those really those two concepts, which are a really powerful one two punch. I was thinking like, uh, so you have 1000, like, like you said, uh, different segments broken down, you identified them uh, for, for your brand. How does that change your overall communication? Because I realized you can individually reach out to these groups with a message, but does your brand sort of reflect this data that, like, that you obtain? Because like, if you have six audiences, you find something similar with them. You maybe have a, a, a similar message on your homepage that will sort of reel them in. How does that change once you know a whole, whole lot more uh, different groups and that, that demand different approaches? Right. So uh, here again, I'll go back to the, the concept I mentioned earlier, where, where a lot of this information came from the, the chief marketing officers that I spoke with, and at least how they're using it uh, today. And that's why I made this distinction up front is it's less about changing the positioning of your brand. It's, so it's not so much that you're, that you're positioning your brand differently for these thousand segments or uh, the, the um, tailoring to the individual. You're, you're, not, you're not adapting your positioning. You're changing kind of the activation component, right? So it could be, for example, tailoring the offer or the communication or messaging or different touch points to meet the needs and the preferences of uh, individual customers. And, and obviously, in order to do this, you need information, you need data on them. You have to, whether it's zero or first party data, you have to understand what their uh, behaviors are, what their motivations are and preferences and needs. But if you do understand that, that's where AI can come in and begin to kind of tailor the experience. So it's not, it's not tailoring the positioning. I don't think we're, to my knowledge, no one's doing that or recommending that, but you are tailoring the offer and the experience to meet their needs and, and give them a better overall customer experience. Appreciate that. Cause we had a talk um, about inclusive marketing. And I was also like, I was thinking, how does that impact once, once you know that you have whole, a lot of different groups, how do you change your approach? So I'm glad that you cleared it up that it's a big deal. Yes. That's just the activation aspect of it. I also wanted to sort of address the, the potential challenges of brands that are uh, thinking about redoing their strategy or at least optimizing it so that they have a uh, forward-thinking approach to their brand. So um, what are the potential challenges um, of adopting, uh, not necessarily AI, but also would also love to include AI in this question uh, into the brand strategy evolution? What are the challenges um, involved? There? Yeah, so... So in the book, I talk about nine different challenges, um, uh, but I'd say there are probably three that came up almost universally with every uh, CMO that I interviewed, you know, when they spoke about things that they really need to be, you need to be aware of if you are incorporating AI in, into your marketing mix and into your strategy development. Um, the first, not surprisingly, is around data integrity. So this is the classic, uh, you know, garbage in, garbage out. No matter how good your AI is, no matter how sophisticated your algorithms, uh, your underlying our um, algorithms are for for artificial intelligence. Uh, if you can't, re if your data isn't reliable, it's not going to matter much, right? So you have to feel very good about the quality and the consistency of your data. Also, regarding the algorithms themselves, you know, make sure that there are no systemic biases. Uh, whether they're intentional or unintentional, right? Because there still is a human component in uh, that goes into the development of AI solutions, right? And and the training of these um, platforms and solutions. So again, I think th those two things, data integrity and, and the systemic biases. A second one is around copyright and IP. And this one pertains particularly to content. So as you think about generative AI, chat GPT, and 
custom uh, GPTs, just making sure that you understand when you are leveraging data uh, and information that is AI generated, who owns it, right? Um, um, and it could be a fairly gray area. Uh, and you know, at what point does that become somebody else's, or does it actually uh, transition into being your own thinking and your own intellectual property? And then the final one I think that came up quite frequently is uh, paying attention to brand fit and authenticity, and and that is that you know as you begin to to turn over or even allow AI to influence your both your strategy and your activation of it. Um, you have to be careful that you're not losing or that um, AI isn't uh, beginning to dilute your brand equity, presumably unintentionally, right? But, you know, you are turning over some control to these solutions, right? So it's going to be really incumbent on the marketer to make sure that they still have oversight of the output and of how these systems are working and making sure that um, whatever is being created or inspired by AI is is remaining true to the brand. And there are some brand filters. So again, you turn more to, to AI to solve that, right? But again, nothing can really replace uh, human judgment um, when it comes to this. At least that's what I believe. Yeah, but at least AI can help us cut corners. And uh, my next question is, uh, how can uh, these tools, including maybe predictive and uh, analytics tools, help us specifically with analyzing competitors, the trends or behavior? to sort of impact the bottom line and help you gain a competitive edge? Because after all, your brand positioning is about getting more recognition out there. So um, once again, going back to uh, uh, the question is, do you have any uh, specific tools or approaches to using tools that we know about to help you analyze competitors and uh, at the end of this process, get 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 an insight that will help your brand gain a more competitive edge? I actually made it a point not to talk about individual some tools or solutions. Um, I have a, uh, in the book, I have actually a very lengthy list across a number of different emerging technologies, most of which are AI, different vendors and solutions, not as an endorsement, but just as kind of thought starters. But what, what I would say is that in particular, the predictive analytics capability uh, within AI, I, I think is perhaps one of the, the best opportunities for marketers to do two things. I mean, one is to gain a competitive advantage in the marketplace, as you, as you stated in the question, right? Because if you are able to, again, understand customer behavior and customer intentions at a, at, at a more sophisticated and reliable level, you know, presumably you're, you're, you're able to better serve them. That's going to increase your profitability, your return on investment, and so forth. The other thing I would say, and this was a very common theme from a lot of the CMOs I spoke with, especially a lot of the B2B CMOs, is that this capability, in particular, the the predictive analytics and also the micro-segmentation and hyper-personalization that I talked about earlier, has the potential to raise the CMO's profile and raise the level of influence that they have within the C-suite and across the organization, right? Because they, if they aren't already, which many unfortunately are not, right? They, they are going to be able to earn a seat at the strategy table, right? At at the um, the big kids table, if you will, because they are talking about things that are there. It's not just about you know you're no longer just a support function, right? That is you know delivering marketing activation. You are actually you know at the nerve center of the business, predicting how markets are going to move, predicting how to drive demand and, or to at least satisfy uh, demand more reliably, right? And that is a very different position to be in. Again, a lot of CMOs are already there, especially in more uh, consumer-driven uh, businesses, but in B2B businesses where that's not the case, they do see AI as a means for accomplishing that. I was wanted to sort of get a more insight for our listeners that are more maybe uh, their first steppers in, in marketing. Uh, maybe they are already CMO, but they don't have enough experience and they just want to get a, a visual understanding of the example that you said, like using AI to predict market. Uh, you don't need to, you don't need to give us a name of a company of a brand uh, that specifically does this. But what is the process? And in, in, do you get a lot of data from just your services, like your CRM system, or and then you just feed that into uh, an AI and then ask it a, ask it different questions? Is that the predictive analytics uh, in action? It may even be easier to give an example, and it's one that is in the book, and that is. Um... 
I spoke with the CMO of Sephora, uh, and he talked about how they, not just him, right, but the entire company, um, is using AI, uh, and in particular, the again, it's really the, the those two concepts that I talked about earlier: the micro segmentation and the um, personal hyper personalization. So, the example he gave me is. You know, imagine somebody walking into one of Sephora's retail stores um, and they're talking to a representative and they're able to tell them, you know, fair amount of information, right, about what, you know, who they are, what what they look like, what their preferences are, right? They have blonde hair, they have hazel eyes, they're lightly complected, high cheekbones, you know, 35 years old. They're looking for something that is, you know, for slightly oily skin and it has a sun, uh, sun protection factor of, of 15 or greater. And all of these different factors are then, you know, could be fed in and almost instantaneously, their 5,000 products are reduced down to three, right? That could be recommended based on all those different factors that were provided, right? And that is essentially prediction in a way, right? It is predicting, in this case, what product would be most suitable for a consumer based on a lot of different characteristics and preferences. Is that the aspect of some sort of hyper-personalization a bit? Actually? Yeah, it is both, right? It's 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 your thousand, right? It's it's your segments of a thousand a thousands, right? You're taking this woman, you know, let's say her name is um, Alicia, right? <laughs> And she's no longer just one in six segments, right? She's a very, very specific segment with very specific characteristics that are unique to her and a solution that's recommended to her based on that. Yeah. And by the way, I know we're talking about AI, but he also went on to say then they use other forms of emerging technologies like augmented reality, uh, where the consumer can quote unquote try on this product, 15 different products without ever having to put, actually put put the product on her face, right? Um, and, and yet see exactly what it's going to look like. And that's really what augmented reality is. So it's really fascinating how all of these things can work together and create um, a much more personalized as well as immersive experience. Basically, we've covered the personalization aspect. So I don't want to focus yeah. on that. Let's talk a bit more about differentiation, setting yourself apart from other from the competitors in terms of creating unique value propositions and to, and to stand out. So uh, obviously... The traditional approach is to uh, understand the, the W's of your business, of your brand, the four W's, and then uh, try to figure out what it makes you unique. But w what if we engage AI? Once again, I'm, I'm imagining somebody who is very eager to earn a lot of money. They're listening to our podcast and they're thinking, okay, how can I help AI, help AI help me understand what makes me unique? Uh, do you have any specific exa examples or cases that will instruct people or sort of lead people into understanding better their uh, unique value proposition for their brand using AI? Yeah, I think there's a few ways. Um, you know, one is I think some of the generative AI solutions. So for example, the, the, the chat GPTs of the world, I think that they are very good at, again, if you give them some data to work with, they can kind of help you distill again, not do it for you, but help you distill like what is unique about you in this case. And there are, and by the way, this, this could be also done on a much more custom basis. So, um, so, some of the CMOs as well as vendors that I spoke with are taking chat GPT and creating custom versions of it. So they're training it on, on a very specific company or a very specific brand. In fact, I've done it on myself, right? For the for the books that I wrote, and it also includes the um, you know, my, my company's website and so forth. What uh, you can do for really not a whole lot of money is actually begin to train that tool, right? That GPT um, on your personal universe, right? So you think you know think about the possibilities. They're all of a sudden not going out to the World Wide Web. Or they are, but only later, right? They're first prioritizing you and your content and what they know about you, answering any number of questions, really, but one of which could certainly be, you know, what is unique about me? What is my specific unique value proposition? Have, we, have you had in your experience any cases where AI has been able to help businesses come up with a new service or product, uh, innovate something, just sort of uh, fill the gap? Like um, it just sort of connected the dots. I understood that. You could create a new product or something that will fill the gap for this specific segment. Do you have any experience with that? Not so much actually AI 
doing that uh, per se. You know, what I would say, again, and I'm just kind of going off of uh, the, the, the CMOs that I spoke with, um, there is um, already, you know, in the early stages, some examples of them using AI and also the extended reality that I talked about to essentially truncate the um the new predominant process and innovation process, right? So you're able to use AI and um, extended reality, you know, in particular um, v- uh, VR and AR to test things um, much more quickly, um, much more cost effectively, and essentially, you know, develop prototypes and pilots of, of innovations and, and new products, again, at a much uh, lower cost point and with, uh, you know, much more reliability and in a faster manner. So that, again, I'm sure there might be examples, but those weren't necessarily the, con- the, the ones that I came across. I came across more examples of them using these emerging technologies to to get to market quicker, to prototype more efficiently and cost effectively. And I love the example that you should have told us about uh, augmented reality. And I'm just thinking, is it limited to like clothing, or do you already see p- examples of just uh, ex- uh, of usage of AR that just wow you like unexpectedly? Because we are a SaaS business, for example, and I'm thinking, how can we? What can we do to sort of give people a feel of the product? I'm stuck at, at this stage, but maybe you have any thoughts. No, it's not limited. Just to, I mean, there's there's example. The example I gave you is cosmetics. Yeah, it's it's the same for eyewear. It's the same for your retail brands are using it in, in various ways. Uh, they are using augmented reality um, to help consumers navigate a store. They're using it for product demonstrations, for example. So, you know, think about you know taking something that is typically. Uh, demonstrate it in a two-dimensional environment and bring it to life and give it that third dimension. So it's being used to, in in that regard. You know, uh, anything that that needs to be visualized that's difficult to visualize ordinarily can be enhanced through VR and AR. So there's a lot of different applications to it. You know, far beyond just the examples that I had given. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely need to explore this to think of how uh, a SaaS business can also Tim engage in this because we want to uh, have that activation happen a lot quicker. Um, yeah, I want, absolutely. I want to talk about more about content. Obviously, this is like the go-to topic for AI, but uh, specifically, I wanted to focus on uh, the storytelling aspect of content creation and just sort of marketing the content later on. Do you have uh, any uh, uh, thoughts on uh, the use of AI once again? Because we want to really want to get people on board with these tools that don't just replace you, but... Uh, help you distill the information and everything like that. So I just wanted to get your five cents on this, on two cents, but what is the expression? Is it two cents or five cents? I think it's two, but if there's inflation, so it might be five now. <laughs> Once again, you want to connect the dots really quickly. You have something to say, you want people to react to it as soon as possible. How do you, in your experience, do that really quickly using AI? So one of the things that um, I found very eye-opening um, about AI relative to content marketing specifically is that although create content creation is, is kind of stealing all the thunder, right? With, with chat GPT, right? With content generation. One of the things I learned is that, that AI is really impacting virtually every aspect, every facet of content marketing. So what do I mean by that? So let's start with the research. There's obviously a lot of research that goes into a good content strategy, segmenting audiences, um, brainstorming topics, generating outlines, creating briefs, even later on keyword selection um, as you're trying to keyword optimize. So AI can be used in very effectively in that phase. Uh, creation, obviously, as you mentioned, it doesn't replace human talent, but it helps amplify human talent, generates first drafts. It can help you create, you know, catchy and, and pithy titles and headers. It can help you with the editing and proofing, for example. So that's the creation. That's the second one. The third is personalization, which we talked about earlier more broadly in terms of AI, but specifically with regard to content. Think about versioning. You create one piece of content and then you version it for different uh, consumer segments or industry verticals or or different languages or regions of the world. So that's personalization or versioning. And then there's also curating and optimizing content, right? So um, the curation, how can you locate and then leverage content that you um, eventually later curate and then optimize 
This is the point I talked about earlier, making sure it's suitable and appropriate and a good fit for your brand. So it's not just that creation, right, which is certainly a very important and big use of AI in content marketing, but it's all these other facets and phases of content that it's impacting as well. Uh, we had a talk with Andy Christodina, uh, who was also engaged in a lot of content creation, and he, he was sort of showing us live the way he talks to ChatGPT before even starting to create the content. He wants it to understand the, the problems that we, that we have. And then once he creates the, uh, the content, he submits it to it and then reverse engineers it. Like, so this is, I wanted to write this yeah. for somebody like that. Does it stress enough the emotional aspect of that? So that was just something uh, eye opening. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think that that's a great example of how um, it's it's really going to be incumbent upon marketers to to be um, you know to think very expansively about this these technologies and how they can be used. As clearly was demonstrated by that example you just gave, right? It's not; it is just another, albeit powerful, uh, tool and, and resource. It's not; it doesn't replace human beings, right? It certainly doesn't replace marketers and or the need for strategic thinking and, and um, creative inspiration. That will always be there, but tools like AI can certainly help with that. Um, it can free up some of the more tedious and laborious aspects that may go along with whether it's content marketing or any facet of marketing, right? And, and free up a little bit more time for you to be strategic and creative and to infuse the emotion that only a human being can really do to ensure, as I mentioned earlier, that whatever you're creating is on brand and so forth. Yeah, I was about to ask you, how do we make sure that we use AI carefully? And you just sort of gave me the answer uh, uh, right there. Uh, um, one of the questions I wanted to ask you is just sort of looking ahead, because you've already mentioned something that we haven't even, well, that I didn't even think about uh, was like the use of AR technology and not just AI. So maybe there's something else that you see emerging or like specific maybe uses of new technologies that are uh, are going to impact the way we position brands and marketing with regard to uh, that this is a weapon that can be used for in different things, both good and evil. Where do you see the future of brand position in marketing going in the next, I don't want to say five years because nobody knows, maybe they will ha hit singularity in five years. Maybe, uh, so just looking like one year ahead. Yeah. One of the, uh, there's a chapter in the book in that technology section around um, Web3. And I do think that that actually begins to address some of the issues that you were uh, referring to around you know, security and privacy and, and fraud and, and things like that. And I think the underlying technology behind Web3, you know, blockchain in particular, ha can go a long, long way or will go a long way toward certainly addressing some of those issues, right? And it, I think it has the potential to, from all of the, the information you read from the, um, the interviews that, that I conducted, it has the potential to, as they say, democratize the internet, um, cut out the intermediaries, right? The Facebooks and the Googles that are right now the holder of all of your personal information. And um, all of a sudden give, turn that over to you, you, you know, through blockchain and electronic wallets and so forth, you really are the owner of your information and you will decide who you give it to, right? It's not being sold through a third party intermediary. Um, I think that's one of the more exciting things on the horizon. We're starting to see some of some of that um, already in, you know, coming out um, in, in Web3, but just scratching the surface. I think um, there, there really is the uh, the potential for the, for blockchain to make the internet uh, much more seamless and also much more safe and protected, you know, given its technological advantages. And the last question is basically a takeaway. So imagine you're, you're starting out or you have a brand, but you're not sure about if you're uh, got all the a angles covered, where would I start? Where would you recommend our listeners start with addressing their brand strategy? I'm a, a huge believer that it all begins and ends with your positioning, right? So um, if you don't have a meaningfully differentiated brand positioning, nothing else is going to matter. And you know, at the end of the day, you are, you are, um, dealing with or at least bordering a commodity right you're you're um, no different than any, anybody else or potentially even everybody else and, and you're only going to go so far in terms of gaining the competitive advantage that we've been talking about really throughout this entire episode so um again i know it, it's old school it's traditional it's it, it's not about all these technologies we spent the last half hour plus talking about but 
you, you need to really ensure you've got that strategy. And by strategy, I mean brand positioning nailed. And and it is as as powerful as it can be. Uh, thank you, Mitch. And um, one last thing is, where can our listeners uh, find you or get in touch with you to get to get sure. more or uh, reach out for your services? Yeah. So a couple of things, a couple of places. Um, my firm, as uh, you mentioned up front, is Full Surge. That's F U L L S U R G E dot com. On there, you can find out more information about me um, personally, as well as the firm overall, the book, uh, the Future Ready Brand, as well as my first book, uh, Indispensable Brand, is also um, featured on the website. And then the books are also available virtually anywhere that you would purchase books, um, especially online, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, etc. cetera. Uh, you can also reach me on uh, LinkedIn, um, Mitch Duckler on LinkedIn. Thank you for taking the time out of your business schedule to be here with us. Uh, so I'm going to end it here and just uh, do the sign off. Today, Mitch Duckler talked about various AI-driven strategies for brand building. Hope our listeners are already thinking about how to apply these insights to their work. Thank you, Mitch, for taking the time out of your business schedule to be here with us. And to our listeners, thank you for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe and join the next episode of the Do Follow podcast.